So today, there's quite a couple of things that I want to say. And um, lately, there's a lot of open doors that, that opened up. And um, I've had to share quite a bit with companies and, and businesses. And I really, I really enjoy that. You know, and it's amazing to see that sometimes people say, you know, I've heard people say, I'm a Christian, but let's talk business now. <laughs> I don't think you have to close the one door of being a Christian to do business. I think you can do both. Hallelujah. I think you can be a Christian and still do business. <laughs> um, I don't know why people say that. But I believe that everything in the Word of God is so intertwined in every area of our lives. Amen. Um, when we read the Word of God, the Word of God is not just for your personal life or your relationship with Jesus. But the Word of God is also for your relationships that you have with people. The Word of God is intertwined even in our businesses, and so we call it um, kingdom business. Um, I believe there's principles in God's kingdom that, that we have to keep close to our hearts, and I've seen people do kingdom business, and it's amazing to see that. And in this, uh, last week I sent a video to some of the businessmen, and I mentioned to them that we have to understand that when the Bible says, seek first the kingdom, it doesn't just speak to our personal lives. Um, it speaks of every area in your life, even in your relationships, first seek God's kingdom. Even in your marriage, first seek God's kingdom. In your business, first seek God's kingdom. Uh, when, you, when, when you're a sportsman or a sport, sportswoman, seek first God's kingdom. I believe in area, every area we have to, have to seek His kingdom. Um, that should be your motive. That should be your goal, your vision. And as you wake up every morning, say, Lord, what can I do today to first seek your kingdom? Lord, what will my motive be today to go and do business? What will my motive be today when I go to church, when I sing a song, when I worship? Number one, first seek the kingdom. And the Bible says, and everything else shall be added. Everything else shall be given to you. It won't help if we seek everything else and only in certain areas see God's kingdom. So we've been preaching lately on building. And as you all know, in our own ministry, we are busy building. We are busy putting new structures in place. We are busy uh, building, uh, appointing new people in different areas. And, and I thank the Lord for every person that he sends. But uh, we need to know that as you become part of the ministry and as we work together, our goal is to seek God's kingdom. Amen? Um, that's, uh, that's our goal is to seek his kingdom. Now, Jesus preached when he rose from the grave for 40 days. He spoke about the things concerning the kingdom. Um, when we look in the Bible where Jesus spoke to the people, most of the times that you would, he would use the words, the kingdom of God is like a man who walked in a field, found a treasure, went and sold everything he had to buy the treasure. The kingdom of God is like a master. So Jesus would over and over again speak to the people about the kingdom. Jesus wanted to establish a hunger and a thirst and a desire for his kingdom. So most of the times where he would speak to the people, it would be concerning the kingdom. Amen? So we need to understand the kingdom. Um, we need to believe in the kingdom. We need to walk in the kingdom. We need to live in the kingdom. And, and so I always say, I don't know why or how we can preach on anything else. Because the Bible says it's also called um, we go and preach the gospel, but it's never just gospel. It says, go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. And I want to say it again today. I know that I've said it so many times before, but I want to say it again today. It's never just gospel. If we only preach gospel, it's like we're giving people a vehicle without fuel. It would be really nice to only hear the gospel, the good news, but we cannot just hear the good news without understanding kingdom. Kingdom brings structure. Kingdom brings accountability. Amen? Kingdom brings commitment. If people only hear of grace and only hear of mercy, then they feel, and, and, and that's how they sometimes understand it, is that now whatever they do from now on is okay. Whatever decisions I make is okay because I've got grace. But the kingdom of God tells us that if our righteousness is not more than the Pharisees, then we will not enter into the kingdom. Are you all with me? It, it is, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle 
You all remember those scriptures. And so I've sometimes been conflicted in that area, but I know that I now have the righteousness of Jesus, so I know that I can walk in the kingdom. I know that, that, that the Lord spoke to Peter and said, Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Why? Because he said, you are the Christ. I have a revelation that's been given to me directly from God. You are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son of God. And therefore, Jesus said, I give you the keys of, of the kingdom. Your name will change from Simon to Peter. And that's what the revelation does. It changes who you are. It changes how you look. It changes how you speak. It changes your attitude. So by seeking the kingdom, we change. Look at somebody. Tell them, you will change. You will not stay the same. You will not stay the same. And so I want us to turn to Isaiah 53, just real quick. Isaiah 53. And so lately, in the last couple of weeks, I've, as I've been preaching to certain companies, as I was preaching and sharing with, with Hope Corner as well in the counseling sessions, there was a couple of things that, that, that really stood out for me. And I just want to talk about that today, just a little bit. But Isaiah 53 verse 3 says, and it's a prophecy, it says that he was despised, and rejected and forsaken by men. Now, this is past tense, but it's a prophecy of what will happen. So this is something that he saw, amen, in his spiritual eye, Isaiah. So he says, he was despised and rejected and forsaken by men. A man of sorrows and pains and acquainted with grief and sickness. And like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised. And we did not appreciate his worth or have any esteem for him. You know, when I look at this, I realize that if we do not know the worth of something, we will always treat it wrong. If we don't know the value of something, we will always mistreat it. What's, what's a better word than mistreat? We will reject it. We will not look after it. And Afrikaans can on say, so it's not the value of something, so we must misbruik. And so we have to understand that even as parents, we have to teach our children, because if they don't know the value of something, they, they won't really look after it. And we always say, if you just get what you want whenever you want it, will you really understand the value? Come on, I, I made a joke about, it was, it was last Sunday, I made a joke and I said, I had to mow the lawn for about 12 weeks before I could go and buy that Batman TV game. You know, I got a one rand, those big one rands, my dad would give me one of those big one rands every week. So I was saving up. And I promise you, when I bought that Batman TV game, I didn't allow anyone else to play with that game because I worked for it. So, so I understood value. It was valuable to me. Why? Because I worked really hard to buy that TV game. Amen? I understood the value. But if I just got it, I would have played and I would have just left it there. I wouldn't really look after it. But, but because you know how hard you work to get that, there's value behind it. And so the value of the gospel cannot be cheap for us. Amen? Jesus paid with his life for the gospel. Jesus paid with his life to give us grace, to give us mercy. And the Bible says when we keep on sinning, when we keep on doing what we want to do, we are continually crucifying Jesus and we make a public display of him. So the, so the sad thing for me is, is that, that if we have decided to follow Jesus, if we have heard the gospel of the kingdom, not just gospel, but gospel of kingdom, of the kingdom, then we make a decision. Amen? We are baptized. We are born again from above. And we become a new creation. And here, when I read this, I realize that Jesus was despised, and he was rejected, and he was forsaken. And then it goes on and it says, and we did not appreciate his worth. I think it's horrible that as Christians or as people who follow Jesus do not understand the worth, not just of, 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 of being able to go to church, but the worth of sitting here in this chair right now. Amen? What value do we add to it? 
I know that once we had this conversation, and I said, well, there's people close by, and they sometimes struggle to come to church. But then we have people from Johannesburg that drove every Sunday just to be here. Why? Because they saw value in it. They realized the value. Their lives changed. I sat in a meeting in this week, and we had a discussion and the, the, the business developer that spoke to us said, listen, I want to know what's your why. Why do you do this business? Why did you start this business? What's your vision? So we had to go through all our whys. What and how? Those three. Why, what, and how? Why do you want to do it? What do you want to do? And how are you going to accomplish it? And so it was a time of reflection. We had to reflect, think about it. And, and it's so awesome to listen to the testimonies. And the one man shared, he said that his whole life changed when he came to church. He said, that's why I, do, that's why I want to do what I do. It's because I want to add to the church. And I, and I spoke to a person a while ago and I asked him a question. If, if I can talk to you right now and give you an opportunity to make a decision, what will you decide if I say I can give you 100,000 rand today, right here, right now. And you can take it and do whatever you want, but you will not wake up tomorrow morning. Will you take the 100,000 rand? Of course not. Okay, if I say, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a million rand. If I give you a million rand right now, but you will not wake up tomorrow morning, will you take the million rand? Okay, if I give you a billion rand, are you sure? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. If I give you a billion rand, you won't. You won't take it. Why? And without even knowing it, without even understanding it, you can think right now, man, I can do a lot of a billion rand. And I can have a great day. But you don't even realize how much you value tomorrow morning. Can I, can I just tell you that again? You don't know how much you value tomorrow morning. Without me using that example, you value waking up tomorrow morning and opening up your eyes tomorrow morning, take a breath when you wake up tomorrow morning. That is worth more than a billion rand to you. Do you know that? Do you realize that? So there's certain things that we just take for granted and we don't know the value behind it. And, and I've seen it so many times that people take church for granted. Now, go to China, to even speak about the name of Jesus is prohibited. They can lock you up if you say the name Jesus, if you want to preach the gospel. Come on, we've, we've seen this before on videos that they've showed you on the screen. How they cherish just one page in the Bible, how they look after it, they memorize it. It's life for them. But we have an open Bible wherever we go every day here in South Africa. How much do you value the Word of God? And I always say, it's only when you lose something that you realize the value behind it. When I have marriage sessions or counseling sessions, I always say that for me in marriage, one of the most important things is not just commitment, but it's also sacrifice. It's sacrifice. The Bible says wives should respect their husbands. And, and husbands should give themselves like Christ, Christ gave himself to the church. So for me, it's all about sacrifice. It's giving. It's giving what you have. It shows that you value someone. And the amount that you give shows the amount that you value them. There's, there's so much we can talk about today, but I have to stay to the point because I want to pray for people today. We want to lay hands on you. Amen? I want to trust that, that you will receive healing today if you need healing. But we have to value the anointing of the Lord. We have to value His presence. And a man once asked me, and I think I should go in this direction today, but a man once came to me and he said, Pastor Mon, I want to ask you a question. I said, okay, let's sit down, let's talk. And he said, I want to know why, if God knew that Adam and Eve would eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, why did he put that tree in the garden? Why did he do that? Why did he not just put the tree of life in and remove the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Then there would be no sin, there would be no sadness, sickness, death, disappointment, and we would continually walk with him. 
And he asked me that question, and I thought about it just real quick as I sat there. And there were so many scriptures running through my mind. And the next moment, I remembered what Sadhu Narsin said many years ago. Because he asked Jesus, he said, Jesus, what is true joy? What does it mean to have true joy? And, and you've all heard me say this, but Jesus looked at him in a vision and said, Sadhu Narsin, he said, um, true joy is when you can make a decision, either to follow me, reject me, love me, hate me. It's when you make a decision to turn the other cheek. It's when you make a decision to love those who hate you, forgive those who've hurt you. It's when you make a decision between two things. And when you make the right one for which I will be glorified, it's when you make that decision where, and, and at that moment, that's where you experience true joy. And I read that, and he, there's many more visions of, of Sadhus Narsin, but that's the one that just really stuck in my mind, saying it's all about decision. So whenever I make a decision to follow God, a decision to be born again, a decision to ask forgiveness, a decision to love, a decision to help, a decision to go to church this morning, even if I'm tired, even if I'm weary. A decision to drive up to somebody, give them a hug, say, I forgive you for what you said. I forgive you for what you've done. The, the, the Lord said to him, at that moment when you can make a decision, that's when you experience true joy. Come on, how many of you can agree with me today that you've done things when you didn't want to do it? You decided to still do it. You decided to still say, well, that's what the word of the Lord says, so I'm going to do it. And when you've done it, you experience joy. Come on, just by, by lifting up your hand, you've experienced it before. And I remember there were times in my life when I did not want to do certain things. I remember I was praying about something very specific for a long time. And so <clears throat> I had a lot of, let me say it like this, I had a lot of watches. And so... I gave away all my watches. I'm a giver. If the Lord says, take something off, give it, I do it. I'm, I'm obedient. I remember one year I was about to go to America, and I was just packing my suitcase. And I called Aisha. I said, honey, uh, where's all my watches? And she started laughing. She said, you gave all of them away. I said, no way. I can't have, really? Did I give everything away? She said, you gave away all your watches. <laughs> so I didn't have any watches. I couldn't even capture my steps with discovery. Couldn't even do that because I gave everything away. But when I feel it, I do it. Because I value that moment where the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And, and I can't wait for Him to speak to me and say, do this or do that. I remember I was in Silfontein praising and worshiping the one afternoon. And we were singing and the Lord spoke to me and said, go back to Middleburg. And I'm like, Lord, I'm in my second year of Bible school. I still have to finish my third year. They just gave an opportunity. They just promoted me here at the church to do something more. And the Lord said, go back to Middleburg. And I said, Lord, well, if you want me to go, I will go. The next moment, my phone rings. And a doctor from Middleburg <laughs> phoned me. He said, listen, your mom, I just want to ask you, when are you coming back to Middleburg? I feel the Lord spoke to me. He said, I have to call you. Come back to Middleburg. I said, well, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> I value your presence. I value when you speak, and I will listen. And I came to Middleburg. And so I can't wait for those moments. And I remember I was preaching once at a, at a conference, and one of my good friends were there. And somebody just blessed me with a tag ewer. Now, many of you will know a tag ewer. Now, that tag ewer, I did not know at that time when I gave it away. I did not know how much the value was. <laughs> But it was valuable to me, and I didn't even know that the value of the watch, but to me it was valuable, because to that morning I was praying, saying, Lord, please give me a sign that it's time for me to make this decision, something very personal. And that morning I said again, when I walked to my office after the service, I said, Lord, please give me a sign that it is time for me to make this decision. And I walked into my office when I got to my table or my desk, there the watch was lying on my table. I went and I looked and I thought, well, maybe it's the lost and found. <laughs> maybe somebody put it there because somebody lost their watch. And I came out, I said, hey, guys, before you go, whose watch is this? I think you lost it. I just want to give it back to you. My one friend started laughing. He said, no, 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 no. 
You don't know what happened this morning. This morning, I prayed, and I said, Lord, please, if it's time for me to make this decision, <laughs> tell me what to do. And the Lord said, it is time. But I needed to do something. And my friend said, he stood in the service, and he said, Lord, what do you need me to do? The Lord said to him, take off your watch. Go into the office and put it on your mom's table. I've got a word for him. So he was praying for the Lord to answer his prayer, to tell him it's time. And that moment he said, that's what I'm going to do. So he put the, the, the watch down on my desk. I got there and I saw it and I thought, wow. You know, this is a nice watch. But what he did not know was for weeks, the Lord spoke to me about time. So I felt, okay, I want to buy a new watch. And I felt this desire. I felt the Lord said to me, you need, you need to buy a watch for yourself. You gave, gave all of them away. You need to buy a new watch. So here I'm praying, saying, Lord, and what do I need to buy? You know, I, I talked to the Lord about everything. I said, Lord, what watch do you think I should buy? And the Lord, Lord put this picture in my mind. So I was browsing through on the internet, all the shops, and I saw this one, and I felt, man, I want to buy this watch. And when I saw the price, I said, Lord, there's no way I'm buying <laughs> this watch. And I started laughing. I said, well, why did I see this watch? Because I will never pay this amount for a watch like this. I will never. So I kept on browsing, looking after everything else. But I, I took a photo of that watch. And nobody knew of it. Not even my wife knew. I was just talking to the Lord. And the reason why I did it is because I value that time when I speak to the Lord. And I believe he values the time that you decide to give to him. Let me say it again. I believe God values that time where you decide, I'm going to lock myself in my room and I'm going to give an hour today to the Lord. I'll give it half an hour or 10 minutes, whatever time you give. I believe God values that. And so when I was lying in my bed and I took a snapshot of that, that, that watch and every time I'll go for my photos, I'll see the watch and I'll just, bro, I'll just skip. I think, no way. And I said, I remember that one morning, I started laughing as I was praying in my car on my way to the office. I said, Lord, by the only way I will get a watch like that is if you bless me with one. And I left it there. And that Sunday, as I was praying, I said, give me a sign, Lord, that it's time for me to make this decision. When I got into the office, there was, there was the watch. And I didn't believe it was mine, but the man blessed me with it. And to make a long story short, I was preaching at a conference. And so here I'm preaching and sharing the word. And after the service, a friend sat next to me. And the Lord said, take off the watch that I gave you. I want to tell your friend it's his time to do something and to decide. The dad took the watch off. I put it in his hands. I said, Lord, said I have to give you this watch. And he says, it's time. He fell on his knees and he started crying. He said, Jamon, you, you, won't, you won't understand. Today when you preached, I spoke and I said, Lord, please tell me when it's time for me to make this decision. And the next moment you came, you said, the Lord says, it's time. Take the watch. <laughs> and afterwards, I was browsing and I saw the same watch and I saw the value. And I thought, what? Is that the value of the watch I just gave away? And so I went to America. When I got to America... We were sitting in a, in, a, in, a, in a pastor's lounge, and the next moment, I didn't have anything on because I didn't have anything. I gave it all away. The one pastor came, he grabbed me, he said, you don't know me, but the Lord spoke to me, and he said, I have to take off my watch and give it to you today. Now, it's not about the watches, it's not about this and this and this, and this, but there's something about a watch, and there's something about timing. And when we read this passage, it says in the past tense that he was rejected, and then he goes on, and it says, and we did not appreciate his worth. And so he saw this vision of where Jesus was rejected. We did not see his worth. And it speaks here of, of, of a time and a place and a person. So you can write this down. God value, he values time. He values the place where you are. And he also values the person that you are. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm saying this today. It's because time is very important with God. God 
lives in eternity, and He created us to live in time. So God is always the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God is om- omnipotent, omnipowerful. God is in my yesterday, but He is also in my future. And the same question that, that is asked every now and again that confuses people, and the reason why I'm saying this today is that when we get confused by certain questions, um, things we don't understand, then value goes out of the door. Is that, is that true to you? And, and, and so a man once asked me, okay, so if, if, if God then knows what tomorrow would be like, and if God is then in tomorrow, so then how does that, that change my life? Because he already knows I will miss it tomorrow, or he knows that I will succeed tomorrow. And the answer that I always give people is that when we have people who can predict the weather forecast, or they will give you a weather forecast, they can tell you, well, the forecast says it's going to rain tomorrow. Then they have the information that it would rain tomorrow, but they don't make it rain. Are you all with me? So just because God knows your tomorrow doesn't mean He causes you to do it. It's still your own decision. So just because He knows your tomorrow doesn't mean you're a robot. You're programmed to do what God knows you will do. No. And so just because I know it's going to rain tomorrow doesn't doesn't mean that I make it rain. Are you all with me? And so that's the one question people always ask. And that's why I feel some people throw out all the other ideas, all the other truths, because just in this area, at this time, at this place, and in the place where I am as a person, I don't understand. I believe there is growth with God. I know that I'm no longer in the place that I used to be. Amen? I remember I no longer waste time the way I used to. I know that I'm no longer the person that I used to be. Why? Because of His truth. Because I understand value. And so earlier I asked you the question, and we cannot, and many people say time is money, but many of us spend all our time to get money. And many times when we are older, we realize that the money that you have accumulated can no longer buy you time. Many people are paid because they are valuable. Your time is valuable. At a time in in our company, many years ago, we had to give quotes. And certain men would ask me, okay, so if your dad's going to be involved in in this project, um, uh, what do we need to pay him? And I said, well, if you look at his accomplishments and what he has done before, It's going to be valuable, (laughs) you know? Um, And and then we have to understand that his time is valuable. And many times the engineer would quote accordingly saying, I'm going to be with you, this is my traveling time, and I'm going to be there for about five hours. That's how valuable five hours are to me. That's what I can do in five hours, and I will let you quote accordingly. Because who you are makes you valuable. valuable. The time that you spend with people needs to be valued. Are you all with me? They need to value you, you need to value them. If I buy a water here in church, it's going to cost me how much? How much is the water? 10 rand? 12 rand. Okay, so if I buy a a water here in this place, this time, and with the people here, it's going to be 12 rand. If I buy this water in a cinema, it's going to cost how much? 20 rand. If I buy this water on an airplane, how much will it cost? 50 rand. So it's the same water. It's the same size, same name, same shape bottle. It's still the same water. But a year, it's going to cost 12 rand. But on an airplane, it's going to cost me 50 rand. Why? The area, the time. Uh, Let me ask you this question. If you're at church and you're thirsty, you're going to buy this water. Am I right? And you will pay what, what you feel is the value. If you are thirsty and you've been in the desert for five weeks and you want to buy something, what will you do? How much will you pay for the water? You will pay every, anything. Why? Because it's valuable. You know, if I don't drink this water, I'm going to die. I'm so thirsty. So, so value changes when you realize where you are 
at what time you are in in your life. And so I realized that with God, money will always come, money will always go. And so we need to understand that, that you cannot connect money to the value of what God can give you. I once spoke to a friend and I said, it's so sad that sometimes when you go to church or when you, when you preach, people don't really value the word that you give. And I said, but last Sunday, we led people to serve Jesus. And people gave their lives to Jesus. And we have to understand what value there is in somebody giving their life to Jesus. Because not a hundred billion rand can be paid for salvation. Are you all with me? You can't pay. There's no value you can add to it. There's no money-wise. But Jesus gave his life. Do we value the life he gave for us? How much do we value each breath? I've sat at deathbeds where men say, I've wasted so much time in my life, and right now I'm about to die. But if I can just live five months longer, if I can just get one more day, you know, and if we, if we just do not value what we have, we will always misuse it, always mistreat it. When you wake up in the morning, you say, Lord, it's such a, such a privilege to breathe again today. Do you know when I started valuing life even more, I do value life. But the day when they held a gun against my head, when they had a, fr- a knife against my throat, a knife in my back, a knife against my belly, forced me to go on my knees saying, you're not going to see tomorrow. We're going to take your life today. Do you know how much I valued life? Five minutes later when I got away, I just said, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. <laughs> and every day when you wake up, you say, Jesus, thank you that I'm alive. But sometimes these things have to happen in your life to show you what's valuable. You know what I did a day later? I phoned everybody. I said, listen, I forgive you. You might not even know. But I was upset about this and this. I don't want to have any feelings against anyone anymore. I'm just happy to be alive. Hallelujah. I forgive you. (laughs) If I've done anything, please forgive me. And I just realized what value there is. When I got home to my kids, I grabbed them. And sometimes we take things for granted because we don't understand value. Being in the desert is going to teach you the value of this bottle of water. Sometimes at home you'll just leave it there. Oh, you, you throw it out, water the plants with what's left. <laughs> but do you know the value? And so it says here that we did not know the value of what Jesus came to do. We didn't understand the value. And it's quite sad when you keep, keep on reading the Scripture. And we can do that. But I want to come back to the question that a man asked me. Why did God do that? Why did God put that tree of knowledge and good and evil in the garden? It could have been so much easier. If God then knew, if he knew the future, if he knew the time, if he knew the person, why would God put that tree in the garden? And it comes back to what Sadhu Sunar Singh said. He said, it's when you can make a decision It's then when you experience true joy. See, the thing is, just because God knows tomorrow, it did not create you to be like a robot. Because if if we were programmed like robots, just to do everything perfect, everything right, then we would not be able to give glory to God. But it's when you can make a decision to serve God, when He gets the glory. Hallelujah. So God gave us the power of, of, of free choice. And with the power of free choice, now you're going to get this, you can write this down, but, but with the power of free choice, God also gave us the ability to distinguish between what is valuable and what is not valuable. Many men that I've spoken to says, when my wife divorced me, when my wife left, I realized what value she added to my life. When many women lose their husbands, they say, uh, now I realize, because he's not here today, he, he might have passed away, but today I value him so much more. I wish I told him how much I valued him. 
But today, because I've lost him, now I know. And sometimes it, we only have to lose something before we truly understand the value of something. Is when you're about to lose your life that you value your life. See, and, 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 and that's what I want to talk about is that value and explain today. I'm not going to be much longer because I want to pray for everyone. But I'm, I'm praying today that the Lord will speak to your heart and once again show you the value. I know at a time we had three bands on the stage. And we had to rotate just so that everybody can get an opportunity. And I know at a time we had an awesome mixer that they, they, they stole recently. And now we're still trying to get that mixer to get to where the old one were. <laughs> Today we struggled a bit, but it's a new mixer. We have, to, we have to teach ourselves how to use it again. You need, to, you need to understand it, but we value the older one, the other one we had. And so you understand that that value sometimes is, is misunderstood. And so what I want to end with today is that the Bible says that God gave Adam and Eve the power of free choice. If we did not have the power of free choice, then we would not be able to glorify God. The Bible says that God is seeking true worshipers who would worship Him in spirit and in truth. That glorifies Him. The Bible says that, is, that the, the Lord says, I put life and death in front of you. Choose life. He says what we should choose. He says, choose life. Don't choose death. There's a reason why there was, why there was a, a tree of life and a tree of knowledge and good and evil. It's because God wanted us to choose. Still today, you can choose to follow him and you can choose not to follow him. So when we have the power of free choice and when we make that decision to receive him, when we make a decision to follow him, when we make a decision to worship him, at that moment, God is glorified and he receives glory. Amen? At that moment, when you decide to follow him, at that moment, your life is changed. You are born again. At that moment when you renounce your sin, your sins are forgiven. It's all about decisions you make in life. And you are the one who have to make that decision. But with the decision comes accountability. With that decision comes commitment. And how do I know that your commitment is when you value something? That's when you are committed. Why are you committed to your husband or your wife or your relationships? Why? Because you value it. I've many times sit, uh, sat in, in, in counseling sessions where a wife would say, I've always done this and this and this and this. I'm no longer going to do it. I'm done. Why? Because they don't value each other anymore. When we give up on something is when we feel it's no longer valuable towards us. And I've even seen people give up on God because they misunderstand the place, the time, and the value. And so I gave away that watch at that time. And I didn't worry about it again. I left it. And for those of you who were here on my 20th ministry anniversary, I sat here in normal service. I had a a great watch that my wife gave me, but I didn't even think about it anymore because I, I don't really care about the value, just as long as it works. Amen. <laughs> and so he stood here and Pastor Pietro said, Jamal, I don't know why, but I just feel the Lord gave me a word and he took his watch off. And this is the one I'm wearing right now. It's a custom made. I don't even know what the value is. I didn't appraise it or anything like that. I guess I have to insure it sometime. <laughs> but the value for me is not the value of the watch. The value for me is knowing that God knows. The value for me is knowing that God is so part of my life that even without me asking something, He knows. At a time, Aisha and the kids bought me a chain. And I don't know what happened with that chain, but I think that chain is somewhere in Yamoni's closet now. Yamoni's also a chain guy. I say, me and Yamoni, we're, we're the chain gang. 
Because a while ago, as I was preaching at a conference, I said, Lord, maybe I'd like to wear something. I don't really wear something. I've never really done it, but I just feel there's something connected to it. And so I was preaching at the conference, and I gave a man a word, and I did not know what was happening in his life or what the Lord was busy doing in his life, but I went to him. I grabbed his hand after the service, and there was just such an anointing. And I said, sir, the Lord says there are three men in business that have done you in. They've stolen from you. They took your contracts. And I looked at him and I grabbed him. I said, the Lord says he's going to restore your life. The Lord says he's going to work in those men's hearts. And they will come and ask for forgiveness. And they will bring all their work back to you and support your company. And when, he, when I said it to him, he looked at me like this, and he fell over on his back. And the other men who knew him started running around in the church, <laughs> running up and down. And the one guy came, and he grabbed me. He said, how did you know that? I said, I don't know. He said, but that's exactly what happened in this week. Three guys, and I know of the whole story. He shared that with me. Nobody knows. And I said that to him. When he got up, you know, he was, he was really touched by the Lord and the anointing. But when he got up, he took off his chain, and he put it on my neck immediately. Because he said, I didn't have anything else I could give you because I value, I value the word the Lord just gave to me. Nobody knew, but God knew. And you made the decision to be obedient because I could have decided to be quiet and say, no, 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 it's not a good idea. I'm not going to do that now. But when I felt that, I said, well, this is what the Lord's saying. It's whenever we make a decision to follow God where there's glory and where there's power. So we can decide to follow him, not follow him. You can decide. And we are the only part of creation that have the power of free will. Animals have instinct. Trees recreate according to their own type. That's how it's programmed. But we have the power of free choice. And when we see the value, we make the right choice. And so they asked me, and I'm going to end with this. Why did God create that tree? Is to give you choice. You know, there were times where I really thought about this, and I, and I prayed about it, and I said, Lord, but it, it's so sad that that we made a, right, made a wrong choice when we could have made the right decision. And I said a couple of Sundays ago, I said, how much do we value of walking with God every day? And I'm not saying just coming to church on a Sunday or on a Wednesday at the workshops or the business meetings on Fridays or when we pray before we eat, before we go to bed. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying when you're walking with God every day, without even praying, you just know God's with you right now. Without even asking anything, he's answering your prayers. When you drive in your car and you feel his anointing and his power, how much do we value it? And so when we look at the power of free choice, it's when we decide to serve God that he is glorified. It, that's the moment when you surrender where, where he steps in. Amen? And so, I realized today that each and every single one of us, even tomorrow, next week, we're going to have to make certain decisions. And we spoke to the, all the guys in Hope Corner, and we said that God gives us the power of free choice. And He wants us to make the right decision. And people have asked me, Mom, but I don't always know if I make the right decisions. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I don't always know if what I'm doing is, if it's glorifying God. You know what it all comes down to? is the Holy Spirit. And I've been praying that this prayer for a couple of weeks now, saying, Holy Spirit, please walk with me the same way that the Lord walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. I value your relationship. But please help me to make the right decisions. 
And sometimes we feel, yeah, but I have to go and pray for a couple of hours, a couple of days, and then I'll know. No, I believe that the Holy Spirit can speak to you immediately, right now, as you're sitting in this place. And He can, he can speak to your heart right now. And last Sunday, as we were finishing up, I asked, does anybody want to make a decision to follow Jesus today? And there were people who gave their hearts to the Lord. Many times before the baptism, we, we have the amount of people we're going to baptize. But every time there's more people who came to church that day, who made the decision right there, right then, who got baptized in their church clothes. Why? Because I just feel like I want to make the decision. So God created us to have the power of free choice, to follow Him. Today I want to say I thank the Lord for the hard times in my life. And the Bible says, glorify God in, in all things. Amen? In all things, at all times. When you're happy, when you're not happy. When things are going well, when it's not going well. Always glorify Him. Always worship Him. Why? Because going through the hard times helps me to value the good times. If there were no darkness, I would not appreciate the light. If there were no fear, I would not appreciate peace. Are you all with me? If everything was just always good, I would never understand the value of what God can give me. I appreciate and I give God glory in the times where, when I was God forsaken, when I felt alone and lonely because it helps me to appreciate where I am right now in this time, the person I am and where I am right now. To appreciate having a relationship with God, to know that He's close, to know that He's here. I appreciate the times when I've given everything away because I realize there's no value in it in any way. Are you all with me? And I appreciate the times when God gave back to me. But there's evil in the world. There's darkness in the world. There's sadness, fear. And I even thank God the times when I felt pains or sicknesses. And it might not make sense to you today, but, I'm, but I thank Him for those times. Because today I'm thankful for being healthy. Are you all with me? I'm thankful to have no pain in my body. And I thank Him for His healing. But you know what the awesome thing is? Is that at the exact time and place and the person who I was, He came and He intervened. And you know what? Jesus is not part of your decision. Jesus becomes your decision. Come on, let's all stand together. So today I said I'm thankful for the time, for the time, for the place, and the person that I used to be. But I glorify Him for who I am today. I know who I still want to be. But understanding who I've been, who I am now and who I want to be helps me to become more like Him every day. It teaches me the value of trying every day to be more like Him. And you know what? This is an awesome paradox of the kingdom. Is the Bible says, if you want to live, die. If you want to be rich, give away. It's a paradox of the kingdom. Andrew Murray always says, the amount of God that you will experience in your life is equal to the amount that you give away of yourself. You have to value giving things away. You have to value humbleness. You have to value sacrifice. See, we see sacrifice as, as you're losing something. You're not. You're gaining. 
many people don't want to sacrifice because they feel they're giving away. No, no, no. You're receiving. When you, when you sow and when, when you give to the church a tithe or a sacrifice, we feel we're giving something away. No, 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 no. In the giving away, you're receiving much more. I, I've preached in Botswana, Mozambique, you know, everywhere. And, and, and in places in Botswana, people walk for about two days to get to the services. They walk. And in the one tent service, we had more than 4,000 people. And I think a 1,000 of that people walked from other cities. They did not have money to pay for fuel or to pay for a taxi or to pay for transport. And when they get to the service and when they take up an offering, they don't have anything to give. And what they'll do is they will take their shoes and throw it in the offering basket. And they will have to walk barefoot back home two days. They walk. But that's how much they value. That's how much they value being at church, hearing the gospel. And I think what sometimes hurt other people, and I think you can ask Yuri, the value of, of music and sound equipment. There's value. And if somebody takes the speaker and throws it in, <laughs> you know, roll up the cables the wrong way, you know, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't know the value of that cable. Don't do that. Let me help you. And you, you need to understand what I'm trying to say today. Today, I'm doing things completely different than what I used to. It's completely against my character, the way I'm doing this today. But do we value what God has given us? I, I think today, if we truly value what God has done for us and what He has given us, this church will be full. Amen? Every church will be full all over the world if people understood value. And it's sometimes when we lose everything, then we cry out to God. It's only when we need Him, when we cry out to Him. Don't wait until then realize what value there is in having a relationship with God and this morning as I was standing in my office I said Lord please help me to understand value and I remember that the man who spoke about the water it depends on where you are in your life what you will value many times when you're growing up in your parents house you don't really value your parents until you become as old as your parents. <laughs> then you, man, I should have appreciated them more. Man, I should have listened. I should have made this decision. I should have done that. And, it, and it's just strange how the Lord uses time, a place, and a person to teach you value. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. And that's why I said, Lord, I thank you for the times that I've gone through. I thank you for the person that I've been where I am now. All of this teaches me value. And when I understand value, I'm going to make a right decision. So today, just where you're standing, I just want you just to close your eyes for a second. And I want you just to reflect, because as, even with the company that I spoke to, I said, let's, let's just reflect on this week. Let's reflect on our decisions. Let's reflect on our own lives, what we've decided, what decisions we've made. And I just want to pray with you and pray for you because many of you might sit here today and you feel, yeah, but it's too late now. I've made wrong decisions because I did not value what I had. Come on, the Bible says that His grace is like a GPS. It will always bring you back to your destination. It might take longer. You might take a different route. But today, I wanted to think about what do you value? Number one, do you value your own life? Do you value your life? Are you thankful for your life? Number two, are you thankful that in your life you, you have the Lord? Is your life an offering towards God? As Paul said, I'm urging you, brethren, to give your bodies as a living sacrifice. 
Today, what do we value? And Lord, I want to pray for everyone right now and say, Jesus, I thank you that we value your word. Lord, I want to say, I value you, Holy Spirit. I value your presence in this place right now. I see it as being worth more than a billion rand. <laughs> a million rand. Your presence is more valuable than anything else. Lord, I understand why prophets would run into cages, be in desolation with nothing, no clothes, no material goods. All they want to do is experience your presence. Lord, I pray, teach us value of where I am right now in my life. And maybe you are standing here today and I want to just put your hand on your heart and pray for yourself. Just say, Lord, teach me to value your presence. Lord, I pray, help me to see the value of having a relationship with you. Please, Lord, today, show me once again the value of, of this church, to be part of this church. Lord, show me the value even of the person standing right next to me. Help me to never neglect, mistreat, misuse the person standing next to me. Come on, husbands, right now, Jesus, thank you. There where you are, just say, Jesus, thank you for my wife. Thank you that you gave her to me. She's not my project. She's my promise. She's the gift you gave me. Come on, wives, for your husband, say, Lord, please help me to never neglect my husband. Never not see the value and how valuable he is. Come on, right now, wherever you are, keep, just thank the Lord for your kids. Thank the Lord for your work. Thank the Lord for your business. Thank the Lord for everything that you have. Come on, let's take a couple of seconds. felt we wanted to sing this song and I'm just going to sing with I was not going to sing it but I just really feel I want to sing it with the band but what I want to pray as the Bible says in John 14 it was actually my scripture for today Jesus where you came and you spoke to all the people and you said if you really love me if you really love me then you will do as I say and you will love my word and then, Lord, in the, further on in the passage, in the next couple of sentences, again, you say, Jesus, <clears throat> you, you said, if you really love me. <laughs> Twice you said, if you really love me. And, Lord, I almost feel I want to say it in the same way. If you really understand the value, then you will make a decision. Then you will do what I say. So, Lord, I pray, help us to really understand the value. And then you said in John 14, I will give you the Holy Spirit and He will be with you always. And at the end, you said, and me and the Father will come and dwell with you and make ourselves real to you. Lord, that's my prayer today. Come and make yourself real to us, Lord, so that we can understand value. Today we just decide to glorify you and worship you, Jesus. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. So this morning, before we sing this song, and I want us all just to sing it together. But as you're getting ready to go back home today, I want to just to prepare in your heart. Say, Lord, I, I value being here at church. We can put no price to it. But the Bible says, each man should, should give according to what he feel in his heart. And um, just before you give, I want to make you aware that we are still busy doing a bit of upgrades in the ministry. We are looking at a couple of uh, things that we want to do in the band. 
and upgrades on the stage as well. Um, so there's quite a lot we're planning to do. And um, if you want to support us and help us, just keep that in mind as you give today. But this morning, we're going to give a tenth or give our tithes or a sacrifice. You know, Prophet Kubas always says in the beginning of the month, it's a blessing. <laughs> in the middle of the month, it's a, it's a gift. And at the end of the month, it's a sacrifice. <laughs> so whatever you're going to sacrifice today, I'm just joking. Let's, let, let's give towards the Lord and let's bless the work of the Lord. So, so as we do that today, as we come and give, we're going to put the offering baskets in front. And as we give, we're going to sing this song. And many of you will know this song. So sing this song with us. And um, after we've all given, after we all sang, I want to pray for those who need prayer today. So if you have your seat, you're welcome to come to the front. Let's all come and give. Feel the warmth. 
want to ask if you were here today and you say, I just want to come today again and surrender before the Lord. Maybe you have never given your life to the Lord. If you want to give your life to Jesus today, I want to tell you how much He values you. That the Lord sent His only Son to come and die for you. And if you were the only one, He would gladly give His life. So if you are here today and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, I want to ask, please come to the front. And if you are here today and say, Pastor Yaman, I just they don't see the value anymore in so many things. Even in my own life, I've lost perspective. I've lost the value of relationships, of the people around me. I just want to come again one more time and just say, Lord, I surrender to you. I see the value in surrendering before you, Jesus. So if you want to come to the front and say, Lord, I just need somebody to pray with me. I value his anointing. I just want to feel his anointing again. I want to feel his presence. So if that is you, you're more than welcome to take a step and to come to the front. And as, as, we, as we're closing this service, and as you all give, and also as you all gave, I believe you all know we have a speed point machine at the back as well. We have the details here, and you can give in front. And, and as we all gave, we just bless the seed right now. We value every saint. But what I want to pray for everybody before we go home, we value health. And we value that your body was broken and your body was bruised. We value your sacrifice that brought us healing. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We value your blood that made us righteous, who washed us clean. We thank you for that, Lord. But I thank you that today we can value each other and that we can play a part supporting each other and loving each other we thank you for that Jesus we thank you for your perfection this morning in every person's body every person's life we thank you for your anointing today thank you Jesus